City. Thank you all so much for this opportunity. My name is Tiffany Santagani. I'm the chair of the board of directors for the Children's Trust of South Carolina and represent the fourth congressional district. While I now live in the upstate, my roots are in the low country as I'm a native of Ladies Island in Beaufort. And so I'm extremely passionate about South Carolina because this is my home. And I'm passionate about the future, which means the kids, their families, and their communities. This is at the heart of why I volunteer my time and expertise to the Children's Trust. The Children's Trust is the only statewide organization focused on the prevention of child abuse and neglect. We lead and support a network that shares our belief that all children should thrive, live in secure families, and be surrounded by supportive communities. We provide funding, resources, and training to help our local program partners build strong families and positive childhoods and lead a statewide coordinated effort for family resource centers, the Strengthening Families Program, the Triple P Positive Parenting Program, South Carolina's Adverse Childhood Experience Initiatives, the Home Visiting that the last speaker just mentioned to us, Child Abuse Prevention Month, and Kids Count. The Children's Trust of South Carolina Partner for Kids Count is a program of the Annie Casey Foundation that uses high quality data and trend analysis of child and family well-being. You're probably familiar with the annual Kids Count booklet, which ranks all 50 states on children and families and how they're faring. The annual ranking uses indicators of four dimensions, economic well-being, education, health, and family and community, to produce an overall child well-being ranking for the state. South Carolina consistently sits near the lower fourth of the state, and this year we ranked at 39. So you're probably wondering why this is important. Well, we know kids do well when families are strong, and families are strong when community can wrap around services for families that need help. Every child, despite their circumstances of birth, should have families that can bounce back from challenges, put food on the table, and have safe and stable, um, loving place to lay their head at night. We know that the past few years it has been tough for families, but we also know it was tough even before the pandemic. I also believe that we, members of our community, have the obligation to stand in the gaps and help families who may be in need. While we have made small incremental improvements in the decades old ranking, especially in economic well being category, where we now rank 37, we still have a long way to go. As the Vice President of Operations for the Greenville Housing Fund, I can speak firsthand about the housing crisis that we experience in Greenville and throughout the state. This year's Kids Count report confirms that 27% of our children here in, Green in South Carolina live in a household with high housing cost of burden, which means they spend at least 30% of their income on housing, which leaves fewer dollars to cover for necessities such as food, energy, transportation, and clothing. Affordable housing helps create financial stability and healthy environments benefiting the entire community and state, individuals, and families. A few policy solutions to improve um, the lack of affordable housing would include increasing community development and state tax credit, property tax incentives for production and preservation for multifamily rentals and housing stability, such as one requested it for the South Carolina Association for Community Economic Development, Habitat, um, and obviously the Housing Trust Funds and the Public Housing Authority. And finally, providing matching dollars to local housing trust funds and land banks through the state housing authorities, which other states have done. This year's Kids Count report also shows a drop in the number of children in poverty and the children whose parents lack secure employment, 21 and 29 percent, respectively. The pandemic could erase these gains, so it's important that we continue to promote workforce scholarships for the future and programs similar to it. Finally, I want to express my appreciation and um, thank the committee for their support of the paid family leave for state employees. 
as we mentioned earlier, obviously that needs to be seen into schools. <laughs> um, but the research does show that the first few months of a child's life are critical to their development. Giving state employees take time to set up their newborn will pay dividends, not only for the children, but obviously for the attention of the employee. So it is my hope that we will continue that um, support for parents and their children in paid time through 12 weeks. So I appreciate the work of the Joint Citizens and Legislative Committee on Children to Son, your obligation to seeking shared solutions, and your partnership with the Children's Trust of South Carolina is critical to all of us delivering our shared responsibility of creating a state where all children have the opportunity to grow up healthy, happy, and safe. So thank you for your commitment to the children of South Carolina and for your time today. Thank you so much.